A sleek, futuristic silhouette glides across the sky, a design so alien it looks ripped straight from a science fiction movie. No fuselage, no tail, just an unbroken aerodynamic form slicing through the air. This is the flying wing, a concept that has fascinated engineers and aviators for over a century. From secret Nazi war machines to cutting edge stealth bombers, the flying wing has always promised something extraordinary. Unparalleled efficiency, near invisible radar signatures, and a glimpse into the future of aviation. But for much of history, it remained just that. A tantalizing promise, a dream, a gamble that often ended in disaster. Many of these aircraft were decades ahead of their time, struggling against technological limits, military skepticism, and the raw physics of flight itself. Some vanished into obscurity, while others paved the way for one of the most advanced bombers in history, the B-2 Spirit. Let's look at some of them, shall we? Before we get to the stealth bomber, before the YB-49 jet-powered giants, before any of the revolutionary aircraft that defined aviation's future, there was the N-1M, Northrop's first true flying wing. It was small, it was strange, and it was the first step towards an aviation dream that would take decades to realize. Developed in the early 1940s, the N1M was an experimental aircraft built by Jack Northrop, the man who believed that the most efficient plane was one without a fuselage or tail, just a pure wing cutting through the sky. Unlike traditional aircraft, which relied on stabilizing tails and fuselages, the N1M was designed to prove that a wing alone could provide both lift and control. It was a humble machine, made of wood and fabric, powered by two tiny 65 horsepower engines, nothing impressive on paper. But its design was revolutionary. The plane's cockpit sat flush inside the wing, with no protruding fuselage to disrupt airflow. Its engines were buried in the structure, making it one of the earliest examples of aerodynamic blending, a concept later crucial for stealth aircraft. In July 1940, test pilot Vance Breeze took the N1M into the air for the first time. It was unstable, difficult to control, and unpredictable in terms, but it flew and that was enough. Over the next year, Northrop and his engineers refined the design, experimenting with swept wings and different control surfaces, slowly solving the challenges of a tailless aircraft. The N1M never entered production. It was never meant to. It was a stepping stone, a proof of concept, a glimpse of the future. Yet across the Atlantic, in a very different world, another futuristic vision was emerging. It's winter 1943. The skies over Europe are a battleground. Allied bombers rain destruction on Nazi Germany, their formations nearly unstoppable. The 22nd of November 1943 raid killed 2,000 Berliners and left 175,000 homeless. The following night, 1,000 were killed and 100,000 made homeless. The Allies were turning the screw, and the Luftwaffe was desperate for a countermeasure, something fast, elusive, deadly. Enter the Horton HO-229, an aircraft decades ahead of its time. Designed by Reimar and Walton Horton, two visionary German engineers obsessed with aerodynamics, this jet-powered flying wing promised unprecedented speed, maneuverability, and stealth. Unlike anything before, the 229's smooth, tailless design reduced radar cross-section, making it one of history's first stealth aircraft, a ghost in the sky before the term stealth aircraft even existed. It was powered by two Jumo 004 turbojets, the same engines used in the fearsome ME 262, giving it a projected top speed of 970 kilometers an hour or 690 miles per hour, faster than any Allied bomber. But Nazi Germany was running out of time. Only a few prototypes ended up being built. In February 1945, the first test flight of a jet-powered 229 ended in tragedy. Engine failure sent the aircraft spiraling into the ground, killing its pilot. The war ended before it could be mass-produced, but the design was so revolutionary that when US forces discovered the 229's remains, they immediately shipped it to America for study. Many believe the aircraft directly inspired the Northrop B-2 Spirit, the stealth bomber that would emerge decades later. And whether that's true or not, the 229 was a glimpse into the future, a stealth weapon way ahead of its time, trapped in the twilight of a dying regime. The war was over, but the race for air superiority had just begun. The Cold War loomed, and the United States needed a long-range bomber capable of striking deep into Soviet territory. And for one visionary engineer, who we've already met, the answer wasn't a traditional aircraft, it was a flying wing. Jack Northrop had already been working on flying wings for years. 
this, and who knows, maybe even got a few pointers from the Nazi aircraft that arrived after the war. In the late 1940s, his dream was taking shape. The Northrop YD-35, a massive, tailless bomber that looked more like a UFO than an aircraft. With an enormous 52-meter or 172-foot wingspan, it could carry a staggering payload over intercontinental distances. But the real magic was in its efficiency. The flying wing design offered lower drag, greater range, and an unmatched fuel economy for its size. It was the future of aviation, at least in theory. But there was a problem. Stability. The YB-35's four pusher-propeller engines caused excessive vibration, making it a nightmare to control. Determined to fix this, Northrop replaced the propellers with jet engines, creating the sleek and futuristic YB-49, one of the most striking aircraft ever built. The YB-49 was rapid. It handled better than its predecessor and could reach high altitudes at incredible speeds for the time. But while it showed promise, its radical design pushed the limits of available technology. Early test flights were plagued with issues, and tragedy struck on June the 1st, 1948. A YB-49 piloted by Captain Glenn Edwards, the namesake of Edwards Air Force Base, by the way, suffered catastrophic structural failure mid-flight. The aircraft broke apart in the sky, killing all five men on board. The crash, coupled with pressure from military leaders, sealed the YB-49's fate. The program was scrapped, and conventional bombers like the B-36 Peace Baker were chosen instead. Jack Northrop was devastated. Rumors swirled that his flying wing had been killed not by engineering flaws, but by military politics, specifically pressure from powerful figures in Washington and competing aircraft manufacturers. Heartbroken, Northrop left the company he had built, and for decades, his vision of the flying wing faded into obscurity. But of course, the story doesn't end there. Decades later, the US Air Force would revisit Northrop's lost dream. The sleek, jet-powered flying wing would return in the form of the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber. Jack Northrop lived long enough to see this vision reborn. In 1980, a frail and elderly Northrop was shown the design of the B-2 Spirit. And with tears in his eyes, he whispered, I knew it would come to this. The world had finally caught up to his vision. But before we get to the B-2, of course we're getting there, we have a few more fascinating flying wing designs. In the aftermath of World War II, Britain found itself at the forefront of aviation innovation. The jet age had arrived, and military designers were looking for new ways to push the boundaries of speed, agility, and efficiency. Among them was a radical idea, the flying wing. While the Americans had their Northrop YB-49, Britain had its own secret weapon, the Avro 707. Unlike the massive bombers being developed across the Atlantic, this was a much smaller, nimble, jet-powered flying wing designed to test the aerodynamics for a much bigger project, the Avro Vulcan, one of Britain's most iconic Cold War bombers. At first glance, the Avro 707 looked like something from another world, a compact, tailless, delta-wing jet with an almost shark-like profile. It was meant to prove that a pure flying wing could be controlled at high speeds, something engineers had struggled with for years. The first prototype, 707A, took flight in 1949, but it barely had time to prove itself before disaster struck. During a test flight in 1951, the aircraft spiraled out of control and crashed, killing its pilot. The cause was unstable flight characteristics, a common curse for early flying wings. Undeterred, though, Avro engineers pressed on, refining the design and producing additional models. The 707B, with a redesigned fuselage for better stability, the 707C, a two-seat train of variants, and the 707D, a never-built concept with further aerodynamic improvements. Each version contributed vital data, shaping what would become the Avro Vulcan, Britain's delta-wing nuclear bomber that served for over 30 years. Though the Avro 707 never saw combat or mass production, its legacy is undeniable. It helped prove the viability of Delta Wing and flying concepts, a crucial step in the evolution of modern jet aircraft. Today, the surviving Avro 707s are museum pieces, a reminder of an era when Britain dared to push aviation to its limits. While the world would come to embrace Delta Wing aircraft, the pure flying wing still remains an elusive goal. By the late 1940s, Britain was deep in the race to develop next-generation jet aircraft. While most stuck to traditional layouts, one company, Armstrong Whitworth, was about to take a radical leap forward. Their vision was an entirely tailless, jet-powered flying wing, the AW-52. At first glance, the AW-52 looked more like a modern glider, a sleek, wide-winged aircraft with no vertical stabilizers designed to slice through the sky with minimal drag. Engineers believed this design could offer greater efficiency, speed, and range compared to conventional bombers and fighters. It was one of Britain's first jet-powered flying wings, built to test whether such an aircraft could be practically controlled at high speeds. The AW-52 had a 39-meter or 127-foot wingspan and was powered by two Rolls-Royce Neen turbojets, giving a projected top speed of 800 kilometers an hour or 500 miles per hour, faster than most aircraft of its time. But there was a problem, and you probably already know what it is, you've watched the video this far. 
stability. Like many flying wing designs before it, the AW-52 suffered from pitch oscillations, an issue where the aircraft would bounce up and down unpredictably. Pilots described it as riding a mechanical bronco, a battle between man and machine at terrifying speeds. And then came the moments that sealed its fate. On May 30th, 1949, test pilot John Lancaster was flying an AW-52 prototype at high speed when suddenly the aircraft entered an uncontrollable dive. The controls locked up and the aircraft began breaking apart midair. With seconds to react, Lancaster did something no British pilot had ever done before. He ejected. This made him the first British pilot to use an ejection seat, specifically the Martin Baker Mark I ejection seat, in case you were wondering, in an emergency, and survive it. He landed safely, but the aircraft, of course, was lost. The crash shattered confidence in the AW-52 program. Engineers realized that while the flying wing was promising, existing flight control technology simply was not advanced enough to make it work. The project was quietly abandoned. But the AW-52 wasn't a complete failure. It provided valuable research that would later help shape Delta Wing aircraft like the Avro Vulcan and even influence future stealth designs. The B-2 Spirit, the ultimate stealth flying wing. For nearly half a century, the flying wing had remained little more than a futuristic dream, a concept that worked in theory but repeatedly failed in practice. But by the 1980s, technology had finally caught up to the vision. Enter the B-2 Spirit, an aircraft so advanced that for years it was little more than a whisper in the shadows. Developed under the top-secret Advanced Technology Bomber Program, the B-2 was designed to be something entirely new an undetectable, long-range nuclear bomber that could infiltrate enemy airspace unseen. It was the culmination of everything Northrop had envisioned decades earlier. The B-2's sweeping downless shape was more than just aerodynamic. It was a masterpiece of stealth engineering. Its radar-absorbing materials, specialized coatings, and smooth, seamless design made it nearly invisible to enemy detection. Unlike previous flying wings, computerized flight controls, fly-by-wire systems, eliminated the crippling instability that had doomed its predecessors. First unveiled to the public in 1988, the B-2 immediately looked like something out of a sci-fi movie. A bat-like predator with no tail, no visible engines, and a ghostly black finish. But it wasn't just for show. The B-2 could fly nearly 10,000 kilometers or 6,000 miles without refueling and reach targets anywhere in the world. It had a top speed of over 1,000 kilometers an hour, 630 miles per hour, not the fastest, but I mean, speed wasn't its goal, visibility was. And its payload, 80 precision guided bombs or 60 nuclear warheads, enough to change the course of history, in a single mission. Despite its jaw-dropping capabilities, the B-2 came at an equally staggering cost. $2.1 billion per aircraft. That's not adjusted for inflation. You want to do that? It's $5.6 billion, making it the most expensive aircraft ever built by some distance. Originally, the US planned to produce 132 B-2s, but after the Cold War ended, that number was slashed to just 21. Yet despite its limited numbers, the B-2 has been one of the most formidable aircraft in military history, conducting combat missions in Kosovo, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya. The flying wing had finally proven its worth. What was once an unstable, uncontrollable dream was now a lethal, battle-proven reality. But even the B-2 isn't the end of the story today, because now a new generation of flying wings are on the horizon, ones that promise to push stealth and technology even further. And that aircraft is the B-21 Raider, and it's coming sooner than you think. The future's no longer a dream, it's here. And meet the B-21 Raider, the next generation stealth bomber set to replace the legendary B-2 Spirit. Developed by Northrop Grumman, the very company that pioneered flying wings, the B-21 is designed to be even more elusive, more efficient, and more lethal than anything that has come before. While much of the B-21 remains classified, here's what we do know. It's an evolution of the B-2's design, with a sleek, tailless flying wing shape optimized for stealth and endurance. It's built using next-generation radar-absorbing materials, making it even harder to detect than its predecessor. And unlike the B-2, which requires specialized climate-controlled hangars, the B-21 is designed for ease of maintenance, allowing it to be deployed from almost any base worldwide. It will be nuclear capable and equipped for both conventional and cyber warfare, ensuring its dominance in future conflicts. But the B-21's not the only flying wing on the horizon. Across the world, military and civilian aerospace companies are looking at the flying wing as the next great leap in aviation. The US Air Force, NASA, and private firms like Boeing and Lockheed Martin are exploring blended wing body aircraft, which merge the flying wing concept with a more traditional fuselage for commercial and military applications. Why? Well, that's because flying wings offer something no other design can, unmatched efficiency. 
By eliminating the traditional fuselage, drag is reduced, allowing for greater fuel economy and longer range. Their shape allows for larger internal storage, making them ideal for bombers, cargo planes, and even future airliners. Some concepts even propose electric or hydrogen-powered flying wings, which could be the key to a new era of sustainable aviation. From its earliest experiments to its top-secret military applications, the flying wing has come full circle. What was once a radical, unstable concept is now shaping the next century of aviation. From the wooden fabric of the M1M to the awe-inspiring stealth of the B-2 Spirit, the flying wing has always been more than just an aircraft. It's been a vision of the future, an obsession of engineers, and a battlefield of science against physics. For decades, it remains just out of reach. Too unstable, too radical, too ahead of its time. But today, that time has arrived. The B-21 Raider is preparing to take flight, and commercial aviation is eyeing the flying wing as the next great leap in efficiency. The past century has shown us that the flying wing refuses to be forgotten. Every time it's been dismissed as a failure, it has come back stronger, more advanced, more refined. It's an unstoppable idea. The dream that once crumbled under wartime pressure, political sabotage, and technological limitations has now become the pinnacle of aerospace engineering. Thank you for watching. Thank you.